surface. Surface. Ceaselessly, in today's troubled world, nuclear-powered submarines of the United States Navy patrol the seas in defense of freedom. Armed with Polaris missiles, these subs remain submerged, hidden from the world for the 60 days of each patrol. Their missions require crews of exceptional ability, training, and character. The Navy is proud to have such men and to tell this story of one of them. Our story commences in New London, Connecticut. I want my daughter to know me when I get back. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Thanks, Johnny. Okay. Yes. Bye, baby. Oh, come on, say goodbye to Dad. Huh? <laughs> oh. Hey, Fred, don't forget to write. Sure. fix that automatic choke. I guess there were too many things to do before I left. Scotland is just what you would imagine, Jan. Villages seem as if they've been there for a long time. Anything modern looks like kind of an afterthought. place to tour, although it might be a problem to stay on the left-hand side of the road. The trip to the Holy Loch was through the lowlands of Scotland, where the poet Robert Burns was born. by the tiny village at the entrance to the Holy Lock. Deep within the lock was our destination, the USS Proteus the tender that resupplies and repairs all the Polaris submarines going out on patrol. Until the Lee arrived, this would be our home. Not a very flashy ship, the Proteus. When you think of what it can do, 
service every department of a fleet ballistic missile sub right here in Scotland, well, that's a pretty big job. These Proteus technicians have a lot of experience, work very hard, and accept no second best. They know that once a sub leaves the Holy Lock, it's going to be submerged for 60 days, and it's not going to be coming back for spare parts, some item that somebody forgot. Pretty soon, you won't be receiving any mail from me. I just hope you won't mind too much. Right now, things are beginning to happen. The Lee is out in the Clyde, and the squadron commander, along with the captain of our crew, have gone out to welcome her and ride her into port. After being ashore for a while, it seemed like I'd been waiting a long time for this. There she was, the Robert E. Lee. working together to make the ship 4-0 perfect. Then the Commodore greeted us, and our captain took over command from the captain of the Blue Crew. First this morning, I'd like to once again welcome both crews of the Robert E. Lee back to the Holy Lock. It's always a pleasure to have you here. And secondly, I'd like to congratulate the Blue Crew on the completion of another outstanding Polaris patrol. I cap one off, I relieve you. The only ships in the Navy that require two crews, man's endurance can't match the tremendous endurance of the equipment. Finally, after much preparation, the sailing date arrived. sea, all but impossible to find and destroy, capable of sure retaliation. The Polaris sub is a tremendous reason why an enemy is not likely to attack the United States. I hope you're getting an idea of what a fabulous boat I'm on, Jan. I'm still riding, even though there's not a mailbox in sight. It won't be for a good long while. Four hours on watch, eight hours off for sleeping, eating, studying, and so on. Then four on and eight off again. This makes up a pretty busy 24 hours.
amidships, extending from the lowest deck to the hatch's topside of the tubes containing the 16 Polaris missiles. Sherwood Forest. It's impossible to comprehend, but our load of missiles can deliver more firepower than all the bombs, including atomic bombs, dropped in World War II. They can only be readied for firing by an order from the President of the United States. May I have your attention, please? This is the captain speaking. We have reached our patrol station. You know the importance of our mission and you know the rules of the game. We don't communicate. We just listen and stay ready and stay quiet. We will have the ship rigged for patrol quiet for an extended period of time. A good part of being a submariner is living with equipment the movement of the needles, the story told by each gauge. Your eyes and mind must stay focused on this. Your ears must be tuned in to pick up the slightest change. I doubt whether I'll have any trouble with this equipment compared to what I can expect in carrying out certain side duties. Don't know, but now we'll have more trouble. I gotta get my clothes out. Here comes Garth now. Hey, Fred, we got a problem. Yeah, so I see. Well, you better get some buckets. You dirty, let's get let's some go. buckets. Some of the young missile specialists in the crew just don't know how much laundry can be stuffed into a washing machine. Unfortunately, I've been tagged as the expert. Something's always going on in the mess hall, which is often transformed into a movie theater or into a college classroom. Courses are given with full college credit by Harvard instructors. Not in the flesh, but on film. These lectures can be properly followed only if you've spent a good bit of time on the textbook for the course. And then on Sundays, the mess hall becomes a chapel. It must be overcome by using all the skill and intelligence of free men. On the other side, the preservation of liberty must be prosecuted with a regard for truth and justice, and a decent respect for the rights of the individual. Services are well attended. Perhaps the serious nature of our patrol has something to do with it. I hope you've gotten used to the idea of not hearing from me. Hey, Garth, family gram for you. At least I can hear from you. Got your first family gram. The one that went, Jenny has new front tooth, both of us fine, love and miss you. The ship's newspaper with its brief news items is our only other contact with the outside world. A good part of my off watch hours is spent qualifying, learning the systems of the ship. Knowing everything about your job and a lot about everyone else's, this is traditional among submariners. You've got to be completely dependable. Ready to do whatever's required, no matter what, on a vessel that's so much on its own as a submarine. Right 20 degrees rudder, steady course 0, 09, 0. In directing the sub's course, the conning officer won't raise the periscope except in extreme emergency. The way we observe what's going on around us is through sonar. The sonar man listens to the many sounds of the ocean, always sensitive to the unusual noise that might turn out to be an unfriendly ship or submarine. A school of porpoises. Sounds like a lot of kids playing. The patrol goes on. A man listening, probing the darkness of the ocean. Others keeping the ship on its designated patrol course. Time passes in a way that few people experience. No day, no night. Work and off time. How's everything going? Okay. No change. No change. That's the way we want it.
To break up the sameness, we have games and all kinds of special events and activities. But what really keeps morale high is the kind of man assigned to a Polaris sub. He understands the importance of the job. He doesn't expect it's going to be a picnic. The second day of the fifth week, the first half of the patrol is over. As good an excuse as any for a celebration. Ah, spaghetti, alla lì, alla dente. Alla dente, that's Connie cooked spaghetti. Alla lì. <laughs> On this trip, a top crew, the best. Oh, boy. No events, no surprises. Until one day, something did happen. Sonar, sonar, sonar contact bearing 140, close aboard. Con eye sonar, right 20 degrees rudder, steady 100. Now rig ship for silent running, ultra quiet. Rig ship for silent running, ultra quiet. Captain Conning Austin, we have a sonar contact close aboard bearing 140, coming right. Rig ship for silent running, ultra quiet. Con sonar classify contact at 140 as own ship's noise. Con eye sonar. Maneuvering con, check all running machinery for excessive noise levels. Chief, maneuvering wants us to monitor all equipment for excess noise level. Okay. You check number one MG set, I'll check the equipment in here. Right. Deep inside one of our generators, there was something that was just beginning. Maneuvering missile compartment. We believe we have detected the noise at number one 10KW 400 cycle set. Request permission to secure number one and put number two on the line. Captain Connie Officer, the excessive noise has been isolated to number one motor generator set in the missile compartment. Request permission to take number one off the line and put number two on service. Permission granted. Con Iser. Now secure from rig for silent running ultra quiet. Secure from rig for silent running ultra quiet. Sure, it's just a matter of changing the brush. Better get on it then. Right, Chief. The generator wasn't hard to fix, just a little out of the way. And it was one of those repair jobs the entire crew knows about, from the captain on down. Hey, Garth, when are you going to get hot in that washing machine? does it. Thanks, Garth. You go get some sleep. I'll check the noise level. The job took longer than we thought. Hey, Fred. Chief wants to see you back aft. And then I found I was at the beginning again. Sonar is still getting noise. And I can pick it up on number one MG set. You'd better start tearing it down. Right. This had turned into a large-scale repair job in a pretty tight spot. If ever I had a chance to show what I could do, it was now.
you still here? Hey, Garth, how about some coffee? I'd been at the job for more than 12 hours. If I stopped now for a second, I might be too tired to go on. I didn't stop. I see number one MG set is still out of commission. Yes, sir. Who's the chief engineer I'm working on it? Car, second class electrician, mate. Let me know when it's back in commission, will you please? Aye, aye, sir. Mr. Compartment Con, how long before number one is back? We're working on it. I'd put another man on it, but there's just no room. Con, I'm. Here it is. Badly scored. Better replace it. Hey, Garth, can I speak to you for a minute? Yeah. You know that washer you're working on? It broke down again. Ready for a test. You go get some sleep. I'll check it out. I'd rather wait. Now let's check it then. Back to my bunk, I was at first too tired to notice the family gram. Jenny had been sick, but was better. And you were both looking forward to seeing me again. I suppose I should have felt good about the job being finished. But I began to think of you, Jan. Alone. Having to take care of Jenny. Struggling with car repairs. Taking care of a lot of things a husband should be looking out for. A submariner is what I am and want to be. But what about family, Jan? What about you? Is this the life you want? It's something we've never really talked about. and the baby? Yeah, I saw him a couple of days before I left. Looked real good. Fine. Is she having any trouble with the car? No. Now, what's this I hear about you being picked for a new ship? New construction? I hadn't heard. Besides, I'm not so sure I'm going for another hitch. I don't think she may be so strong on the idea now. Yeah, isn't it wonderful? Helen just called. They'll be here at 11.15 in the morning. So pass the word along. Well, look. You call Sue James and have her call Harriet, and then we'll all go down and meet the boys, and we can all go out together I'd like to talk to you about that first. Oh, wait, try it again. Uh -huh. A hand show. <laughs> Brilliant. Carl's wife and I were shopping and couldn't get home in it. So she told Carl and he and another fellow from the Blue Crew came over and installed it. Ever since, no trouble. <laughs> but I saved something for you to fix.
Fred? That was the omen on the phone. Said you have an appointment tomorrow morning at 10 with your exec. Yeah, it's about re-enlistment. I did a lot of thinking while I was away. You must have had things pretty rough. Oh, I suppose they were. But I managed. Anyhow, now you're going to be home for two whole months. Maybe longer if you take new construction. But in a few months, it'll be another long patrol. Look, I married a sailor, didn't I? While underway on patrol and under other than ideal conditions, he personally effected major repairs to a motor generator set that would normally have been accomplished by a tender or shipyard. His 16 continuous hours of work contributed materially to the successful completion of the assigned mission. Each launching of this remarkable new instrument for our defense calls for men trained, dedicated, and ready to serve in the finest Navy tradition. Many have answered this call and are serving on many types of vessels. Ours is a balanced Navy prepared for any eventuality to deter, defend, if necessary, to fight. as these ships are, our chief strength is, and always will be, in those who have accepted a task worthy of our nation's highest honor and respect, the supreme task of keeping America safe and free.